and welcome everyone to Co-Produce Care's Chat for Care. Um, we're back after a little hiatus over the summer and uh, we're really excited to share with you some discussion tonight about carers. Uh, very much the forgotten part of social care in my view and it's not the type of care workers which people often talk about which is care workers very different we're going to be talking about carers people who do unpaid work who are looking after people who are their family members um, sometimes rel relatives that are close distant carers are so important and I'm gonna share with you some stats very shortly but before I do I just want to tell you today we're going to be talking with James Townsend and he is a co-founder at Mobilize and Mobilize is one of the few organizations who are really looking out for carers creating those spaces that carers can come together that they can be a comfort to each other that they can talk that they can do things that benefit benefit them as care work as care, carers sorry even I'm getting confused with the, the terms um so really really looking forward to talking to him but also we're going to have a carer on who works uh with Mobilize who has benefited from some of the services that they have so it's a bit of a double whammy we're going to be talking to the organization and also to a carer and if you are a carer then do hang on because we really want to hear from you there's comments um that you can make in the chat so ask your questions, share your experiences. Uh, but I was really, really surprised with some of the stats around carers. Um, if you, there's some things that were shared over carers week and they estimate that there's absolutely a huge number of people who are doing the job of caring. Up to 13.6 million people could be providing unpaid care in the UK today. So that's a huge amount of support unpaid to the economy to people's individual lives um and definitely a sector a part of the sector that's not really talked about um and some argue it's not really supported so we really want to kind of get beneath what carers do and how they support people in the family and um we want to hear from you as well about your experiences but bring people along that you know might be interested in talking about this tonight. Uh, so share this link on Facebook if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube if you're on YouTube um, and do get involved in the conversation as much as you can because I definitely think there aren't enough spaces to talk about this, this subject. Um, and some other things that I thought was really interesting. So before the pandemic, one in eight adults were already informal carers. Um, and we actually spoke with Liz, um, Kendall. So she's the shadow minister for care in the Labour Party. And here's what she had to say about carers. Uh, you've got the, the the new four and a half million people who have become taken on caring responsibilities. You know, that's three times as big as the NHS workforce. It's huge. Mm -hmm. And the existing carers, um, Carers UK did a survey and found that existing carers um, 70% of them had taken on an extra 10 hours caring a week. I mean, that's massive. So uh, they have struggled to get information and advice about what support's available. They've not been able to get in the supermarket queues to get a slot. Um, there's no respite breaks. How can they have respite breaks? Um, uh, they've not had their own mental health needs assessed because a lot of them it's really really stressful and one of the things we where I did a zoom for, for carers week and they said the stress if you're caring for somebody who is shielding what are you going to do are you going to move in if you don't live there making difficult decisions so uh, there's a whole heap of topics that she actually identified around carers. So we're going to talk a bit more um, around that. Um, but also thinking about the definition, this is great. So this is back again in Carers Week. And somebody pointed out that um, one of the most disappointing aspects of the whole Carers Week has been the lack of awareness amongst care organisations, politicians, this that this week was not about care workers. They've managed to miss the whole point of making care caring visible and made unpaid carers feel even more invisible. So 
I don't know. Maybe that's your experience. Maybe it isn't. But do get involved in the chats and we're going to call um, talk about that a little bit more with James from Mobilize. So without further ado, um, of course, don't forget to like and share and comment, but mainly like and share and subscribe because we, if anyone who doesn't know, Co-Produce Care is a voluntary organization. It's run by people who are working in social care, volunteers, intern. Uh, so we really are just doing this stuff in our own, in our own time. And the whole idea of doing these live streams is that we felt there wasn't enough discussion around social care that was outside of what the mainstream media would talk about us and tell us what we do and really we want to take control of the conversation and talk about issues that don't get enough coverage so please support us by subscribing or liking our page however you're watching us it makes a huge difference so enough of me i'm going to bring in james Hello, James. Good evening. How are Hello, you? Hello, Sophie. I'm, I'm very well. Lovely to see you. How are you? Very good. It's nice to be um, to be back and be doing these live streams. It's been fantastic. So um, I'm really excited to get into this topic. And before we introduce you, I want to get your views on this the Freudian slip that I did with care carers and care workers. <laughs> the whole point I was really annoyed about earlier. And I was like, why is it when I say to people, um, we're going to do a live stream about carers, people automatically think I'm going to talk about care workers. Carers are part of the social care system by themselves and doing a fantastic job. And we just don't recognize what they do enough. And they get mixed up in the conversation about care workers who are employed by organizations. Um, so what's your take on this kind of mix up carers, care workers, recognition, I think, is, is the whole topic that I'm kind of searching for. It's really hard, Sophie, and, and um, uh, everybody makes this, I mean, I mean, even I occasionally get get sort of tongue-tied and uh, um, confused when you're, when you're trying to speak in a hurry, differentiating between care workers and carers can, can be really hard. Um, I mean, on one level, we need to do a lot more to communicate as a sector and um, uh, make sure that people are aware that what they might be doing. So, so anybody watching will know somebody in their own family who is looking after someone uh, who needs a bit of help for one reason or another. Um, they are a carer, um, and but but they're they're very unlikely to actually identify with that word. So first up, you know, we've got to do a bit of work um, uh, to help people understand what that means. But I think there's also a bigger question around whether we recognize that uh, this is something that essentially everybody goes through, that this is a normal part of life. And actually for a lot of people, it's a really, really important, there, there is no more important thing in life than looking after the people that you love and making sure that they're happy and healthy and safe. So, so in a sense, my, you asked what my take was, Sophie. Um, I, on one level, would want to to lose the word carer completely and say that, hey, we, we all have caring responsibilities in some way or another. And for some people, they are 24-7 personal care. For other people, that's that's looking slightly different. And for other people, they're on the journey towards that um, and, and they're, they're learning and getting prepared for, for that role as it may come. Uh, so it, it's a very complicated uh, thing. And uh, I, I think there's a lot more work to do. Absolutely. So getting rid of the word care, or what do you think, people? Do put your comments in the comments box. Um, because I, I'm also conscious, conscious, Sophie, sorry to cut you off. That, that, that is also a very controversial thing to say. So it is also at the same time, really important that people do identify as a carer and mention that to their GP and uh, all of the other bits of that. Yeah, no, but I think it's a really good point because we have to have, in a way, the word care or the term carer because we get eligibility to certain support under mm. like the Care Act and stuff like that. So there's kind of like an administrative side to it. But then there's the practical side to it, whereby you say that we're all doing caring jobs at some point and we all probably need some support in some way. Um, and, and maybe there does need to be a bit better discussion around how we identify um, that word and who, who's in it and how we support people. But um, people are probably thinking, well, why have we got James on here and what is Mobilize? <laughs> so uh, can, can you let us know what Mobilize does and, uh, and then why you thought it was necessary to, to start with, uh, with the organization? 
Sure, yeah. And um, so we are the tech startup by carers and for carers. That's our um, kind of primary uh, reason for being. And um, and I launched uh, Mobilize, gosh, just over a year ago now, um, because uh, partly of my own experience in my family. So we've got a number of people um, uh, in different parts of the social care system. Um, in, a, in a technical sense, uh, I'm a carer myself. Um, so my mum has MS. Uh, I have to be really careful about it because um, I feel very self-conscious calling myself a carer. Um, I, I have it really easy in 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 many ways because my mom's doing fantastically well. Um, uh, so I spend more time fixing her iPad than I do in uh, in, in any formal caring role. Um, but we're very much on that journey, and and I've seen how as as we go through our caring roles, we build up this amazing bank of knowledge, wisdom, and experience on how to look after somebody. Sometimes the really practical stuff, but also some of the emotional stuff that's, that's wrapped up in here. And then uh, we come to the end of our caring role, and uh, it's very difficult to know what to do with that. And at the same time, you have people starting that journey from scratch. They're on their own. Uh, they don't know uh, where, where to begin. There's a really profound sense of um, having to learn through through painful mistakes. And the reason Mobilize exists is that we would like to capture that knowledge, wisdom, and expertise and pass it on to the next group of people coming along. Very often, there isn't a right answer, um, but in trying to find a, a better answer, uh, isn't it wonderful if you can, uh, instead of starting from scratch, you can learn from the mistakes and the experiences of 13 and a half million people who've been there before you. Uh, so ultimately, that's what we're seeking to do. That's incredible. So it's just bringing a support group. And in, in terms of um, what you think is needed for care carers, really, um, why did you think it was like a necessary to create your organization? Um, and how long have you been going and what's the kind of success that you you've had sure well we've been we've been running for um uh, it's probably actually 18 months now uh, just well over a year um and i think the key thing that we wanted to to look at was how can we bring a community together to learn from each other um to pool those experiences and and particularly to you to use technology uh to do that so there's a real challenge around isolation for carers. So the numbers of carers who feel um, isolated uh, is, is, is a real uh, challenge. Um, but there's also a challenge about being seen. Uh, and you mentioned the, the theme of Carers Week uh, a moment ago, which was making caring visible. I think a deliberately provocative um, title because caring is already visible. Uh, the challenge is that, that we also now need to be seen as well. So what we um, wanted to do was uh, create a community, um, create a space, bring people together, and, and change that dialogue to make sure that uh, we could bring people in um, and, and, and make it more of a uh, supportive and, uh, uh, to use the jargon, a peer support um, uh, environment, rather than just sort of um, uh, in telling people what they, they need to be doing uh, from some authoritative uh, uh, position. That sounds like a really good thing that you're doing there. And we're going to hear from uh, one of the carers who interacts with you, Vanessa, but later. Um, but how? what do you think about the whole debate about carers being supported enough? From your organisation, and you've worked with a lot of carers, um, the importance of sort of that collective wisdom is great. And, and why do you think that we kind of don't have it already? We don't have those support systems built in already? Well, the real challenge uh, from our perspective is, it, uh, to be crude, um, it, it's, a, it's an issue of data. Um, uh, so um, you were talking to Liz Kendall a moment ago, and I'm sure if you talk to uh, Helen Waitley in the, uh, the, the, the DHSC um, ministerial team, uh, the, they, when they're making policy decisions, that has to be driven by data and evidence. And one of the real challenges with caring roles is that they very often happen inside the home. And, and consequently, it's very difficult to cap capture really um, meaningful, powerful data. Uh, 
an example of this is uh, how many how many carers are there in the UK? Notice that the the statistics from Carers Week had to be qualified as up to thirteen and a half million carers. Now, you know, I, th I think that's a really rigorous piece of research, but it just highlights the real challenge of getting precision um, when all of this is happening uh, so often outside any formal structure. So there was a really interesting dot everyone uh, report uh, that came out. Uh, about 12 months ago, looking at how uh, how data is used in the social care sector. Um, and uh, let's be honest, we're not very good at it. Um, very often, uh, we're using paper-based systems, which might be quite practical for um, moving around. Uh, but the challenge is that then uh, it's very difficult to pool that data. And that is even more acutely the case in, uh, in the world of um, unpaid care, where um, where there the, the, the simply isn't any mechanism for capturing that data. And, th and that's one of the things that we are determined to change by um, supporting carers on a regular basis, but also um, collecting their experience, collecting their evidence so that we can then make a, a much stronger case, which comes back to your question about why there isn't enough support for carers. Um, uh, and there is a lot more that could be done um, by uh, local authorities, central government, and frankly, employers, um, and the rest of civil society, which I'm sure we'll get a chance to uh, to talk about as we go along. Absolutely. I'm quite interested in the work that you do with local authorities, because sometimes there, I'm not sure, because I'm not a carer, and maybe Vanessa might have some views as well later on, but what, how have you had to support local authorities for carers or carers' rights, or how, how have you done that? Well, we've we've um, had a particular offer um, coming up from um, in response to the the COVID situation and lockdown. Um, so the challenge has been, uh, and you alluded to it earlier, that about four and a half million people have taken on a caring role during lockdown um, that they that weren't previously carers. So that's a huge number of people who are completely new to the situation, figuring it out as they go along. And they need support to, to identify what they need to be doing, where they can tap into uh, help either from the NHS or from the local authority. So our role, what we've been doing with a number of local authorities is coming in alongside the existing uh, carer support, that'll probably be a carer's center, um, and e extending that support to make sure that it's available for, um, for the new people, boosting capacity, and particularly doing it online. The, the example which Vanessa has uh, been involved in has been the virtual cuppa, uh, where we've brought people together on uh, what is essentially a, a Zoom call on a daily basis um, uh, to, to provide a bit of space. Uh, and our rule is that um, life is pretty rubbish for carers at the moment. So it's okay to cry, uh, but you're not allowed to leave the conversation until we've found something to laugh about as well. Uh, because that's a really important part of the, the mobilised tone as well. It's almost like a peer support group that also helps mm. have that well-being support as well. And I, we've managed to isolate a clip from one of those cuppers. So let's have a look um, right. at what, what you've been doing. Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's cuppa. Um, hope you're all doing well. We're going to start with an opening round today, which is, um, do you want to share a recent success? whether it's a big or a small one. Tell me about a recent success you've had. Jackie, Shall I go start? first? Shall I oh, go, go on, first? Go on, oh, I'm sorry. Um, on my recent success is today, I have done my dance class. I've had a full on action day. I've done my dance class. I've done my mum's cleaning and I've done an art class. So there's oh. no time to think about anything doom and gloomy. <laughs> <Fabulous>. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you kept busy. We'd like to see a picture of that art class, whatever you've produced. Was it a good one? <laughs> it, I'm very pleased with it. It's a Highland cow. <laughs> so there you go. She's sharing with us that she did a an art class with a, a Highland cow. So what yeah. better way to spend the day, as well as looking after her um, relative as well. So that's Jean, Jean, Jean is an amazing woman and... Uh, um, uh, has, you know, like so many carers, uh, had some real challenges in uh, in the last couple of months, but um, always comes in with uh, something amazing to share and to really pep the group up. Um, a really uh, incredible woman, actually. 
Yeah, so um, a lot of Zoom calls like that where people can come together and uh, share their day. And like you say, make sure they end on a high at some point. So yeah, I think that's, um, that's really good and really positive. And presumably if people want to get in touch, uh, are, you, are you based in one area or is it anybody, any carer, anywhere? So anybody from across the UK and, and to be honest, actually abroad. So we have people from the States, Australia um, uh, getting involved as well. Um, so mobilizeonline.co.uk. Um, you can see all the different ways that you can get involved, ranging from that virtual cuppa, which is quite an intense way of uh, coming together and, and, and meeting people and creating a, a friendship group, all the way through to our e-support package, which is just a an email of... Um, practical advice from carers around the country sharing the their top tips on on what they found helpful yeah that's really good and it's really positive that you're you're doing all of that um so in terms of what you've done also in terms of coaching there's stuff that you've done around coaching can you talk about that yeah this is a really important part of um of the whole mobilize philosophy actually so so we do offer um if you've got a particular challenge or you're you're feeling generally a bit overwhelmed uh hop on to our website and we can set you up with um some free 30 minute uh coaching um but it's also embedded in everything that we do because um whenever a carer is going through a challenge the solution um it, it sits with with them. It's not going to be someone else telling them uh, what to do. Um, in the, the jargon of social care, we'd call this a, a strengths-based approach. So some of the questions that we're often asking are, what's important to you? What matters? What's the next step for moving you along? Um, and, and, and kind of giving people the opportunity to, to set their own priorities, because each situation is going to be different. And uh, we have to remember that social care is all about people, right? Uh, and this is a, a personal thing. So there is no there is no one fix for a particular situation. Everybody's personality will be different. And the person that you're looking after will have subtly different needs and preferences. Uh, and the relationship that you have with them will be different every time. So the great thing about coaching is that it, it enables us to explore what's right for you rather than um, implement an existing kind of um, prescribed solution. Really interesting. And it's a different approach um, to supporting carers. I think it's almost, people might say, a softer skill um, that you're supporting people with, but probably absolutely necessary. What's the feedback been from the carers that you've worked with? Um, well, I... It, I uh, when I started out on this, I thought um, this uh, being a tech entrepreneur was going to involve lots of fiddling with apps and um, who knows what. I, I have to say the most amazing thing is when carers get in touch, as they were doing on a daily basis um, throughout lockdown, saying thank you so much for uh, what Mobilize is doing. Um, and, and I think the, the common theme through that feedback has been the fact that it, it feels like we're all in the same boat, uh, that, that we're all out to support each other, even though we might not necessarily be on the same cuppa, we might not be in the same town, uh, we might be on different sides of the country. We've all got something to, to throw into the pot that might be helpful for someone else out there. And, and I think that, that uh, sense is, is really empowering. And it's also really comforting, um, especially when there are no right answers when it, it, it's not going to get immediately better. Um, to, to have that sense that you're, you're in it together is, is super powerful. And we've been really privileged to, to work with people like Vanessa who are um, uh, 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 giving us really helpful feedback all the time. Not, not just singing our praises, I should say, but also challenging us to, um, to improve things and, and, and make things better as we go along. And that's the key, isn't it? Not just giving people uh, support or service that's top down it's working with people to make sure it works well with them so yeah. um, it's good to see that you have carers very much involved in development of what you're doing oh, well absolutely and and this this is um this is your bread and butter sophie here at uh, co-produce care because um there's only so much thinking um and planning and strategizing in a in a in a workshop that can can actually help and our philosophy has always been 
um, that in order to figure out what the best thing to do is, uh, we just need to start doing it. And carers will very quickly tell us, either by not turning up, um, that it doesn't work, uh, or, or by encouraging us to do something else. And so, so I, I think one thing I've learned going through this process is that when you're doing something that's so personal as a support for carers, um, just get going is is a really powerful philosophy. And, and hey, uh, when things like COVID comes along, that's a great opportunity to start resetting, uh, trying new things, um, and we've seen some amazing innovation um, from all sorts of different organizations in social care, and it's just shown how you, you can actually be really responsive. So just get going, just get on with it and do it and give it a try and see if it works. I like that. Um, well, that's, okay. well, that's what my mother has always taught me. She has some very good wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so thanks for that, James. I'm going to... Um, leave you for a second and we're going to bring in Vanessa so uh, and then we'll bring in you both shortly after that so we'll see you in a couple of moments um so that was really good a bit of an introduction about, around mobilize and what they do do make sure to you keep your questions coming um now we're really lucky to be joined by Vanessa who's a carer and has also like I said before done some work with mobilize so um welcome to Vanessa Hello, Vanessa. Hi, so Hello. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, and uh, it's it's really good to have you on this evening. I wonder whether we could start off by you telling us, um, as a carer, what your experience is and, and what kind of support that you provide to uh, the person in your family. Uh, well, I look after my husband, um, who was attacked whilst he was at work. Um, and he had significant injuries following that attack. Um, and then shortly after that, he started having back problems and that led on to further medical issues. Um, he was then diagnosed with multiple sclerosis. Um, he has lymphedema in both his lower limbs. Um, he also suffers a lot from falls, regular falls. Um, the MS affects the lower part of his body so that he's okay the top half except for a pulmonary embolism that affects his lungs so he has we have a nurse that comes every every Thursday to do a blood check on him to see make sure that his warfarin dose is correct and things like that um that happened about 10 years ago so I I had to give up my full-time work, work to look after him um and over the years the MS has got slowly worse he now has a wheelchair he uses a frame walking around the house he has to be helped in and out of the bath and um help to be dressed and things like that now um but we also have a a 16 year old daughter who's got learning difficulties so although she's there to help with some aspects i can't expect her to do a lot of things because she's got a learning difficulty as well so I, i've got like a dual role of caring really you are incredible and i just want to say on behalf of just everybody thank you for the work that you do because um you you're taking on a huge amount of responsibility and you've had to change your life to support your family so i really am in awe of carers especially hearing your your story and, and i'm really sorry for what happened to your husband um do you feel from your point of view and all the struggles that you've had and the changes in your life that you've yeah. had the support that you've needed as a carer? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I never saw myself as being a carer. Okay. Um, it was, it's my husband. You know, I do things for my husband. You know, I do things for my daughter. You know, anybody who's got a daughter or a ch child of any description do things to help, you know. Um, it was only when lockdown started uh, that I started to realise that, yeah, I am actually a carer. You know, I mean, we've had the occupational therapy come in to fit an extra banister rail and um, the raised toilet and the, the seat to lower him in, in and out of the bath. But then that's it. We don't get anything else from them. You know, so the, it's back down to me. But when lockdown started, um, my husband's mother she has um, COPD, so she became on the shielding list as well. 
as well as my husband. Um, so I, st I took on a, care, a role of getting her shopping. And then I started getting shopping for her neighbours who were also, because the where she lives, they were all, they're all in their 80s, shall we say, mm. with various levels of health issues. Um, so I was doing shopping on a weekly basis for nine different people. Um, and then coming home, sorting it all out and then going and delivering the shopping and things like that, you know. So it was only when at the start of lockdown, re I realised that, yes, I am actually a carer. And it was only through watching an, um, Sky News when Mobilise came up. And I thought, yeah, that's me. You know, I am, I am doing that. So that's when I found Mobilise. Oh, wonderful. So actually you found them through just look the news. Watching which, Sky News, yeah. Wow. Um, and I think that is one of the problems, actually. There aren't as many support groups that are actually, that people are aware of. Um, no. There's probably an issue with that. Um, but I think that is one thing that people don't realise, that once you once you are a carer, once you have almost caring in your in your heart and in your soul and what you do, you find ways to help people because even in your situation, you've already got a lot of responsibilities and you're still helping people in the community. So it is it's amazing what you're, you're doing, really. Um, so talk about your involvement with Mobilize. How how do you work with them and, and how have they supported you? Uh, well, I, I joined the Cuppers. Okay. I since I joined the first cup, I was apprehensive about joining, you know, web chat and things like that, you know, going live on Zoom to talk to people. Um, and it wasn't something that I was interested in. And then I thought one day, you know, why don't I just have a look and see what it's like, see what it's about. So I did, and I've not missed a cup of since. It's so, not just hearing from Mobilise itself, but the other people that take part in those cuppers, you know, sometimes, I mean, you, you mentioned Jean before. I mean, she inspires so much. It's unbelievable. She's always got a friendly smile. Yes, we've had cry, We've had tears from most of us have had tears at some point. You know, if we've had a bad day, you know, we can we know that that chat's there available. Um, and it, and as, as James said, they always end on a on an uplifting moment. You know, something to leave to make us smile before we leave um and it's really helped me it really because there was some days when I was quite low and I thought oh I've only got an hour to make up and now you know it's you. you know and it really does pick you up really it makes, does makes such a difference and I think it's great that you've got that peer support group um because also being a carer and being in lockdown it's almost that double whammy of of potentially like being on your own if you can't go out because people you're living with are shielding you don't have the social networks you might have had before actually having these online support groups is something that's making people feel that actually I've got people who are going through the same thing as me we can have a joke we can have a laugh we can uh, comfort each other but we yeah definitely family safe do you find that's what that's what's happening definitely definitely Sophie it's been it's been a real eye opener in some respects as well. You know, different people who join the cup have got various different stages of, of their caring role. Um, somebody has got uh, their partner in a care home, but they still do some care. Although, um, and then there's another lady who looks after her her mum. You know, so we're all doing different things, but the amount of times when we can be sat listening to somebody and everybody else on the cup is going yeah mm. we know exactly what you mean yeah. you know so you know that you're not alone yeah it's perfect um and it sounds like something that probably i'm surprised that it's not something that every local authority should be supporting so that carers have that available to them um because like you say if you just happened not to have switched on sky when you did then you wouldn't have been able to benefit from that and you wouldn't even know it exists. So Correct. it's like we need somehow to create that better awareness of the support, especially the remote support that's available for people. Um, 
so yeah it's really interesting to hear how you're benefiting from it i'm going to bring james back in to have a bit more of a discussion around how, <laughs> how it uh, helps people and and also just generally how how you think people need to be supported sort of carers i don't know whether the government needs to do a little bit more um it's it's an area that i'm not as confident on myself having been more in in the kind of commission service space um but do you think that during this covid period which we don't know will, when it will end we need to actually have some more concrete support for carers maybe james you've got some ideas I do. I mean, first of all, I'm sort of beaming uh, with with a, a smile just because it, I'm I'm I, I hadn't prepped Vanessa to say any of that, but I'm I'm really really pleased that she's she's found uh, this this as supportive and, and thank you, Vanessa, for the, all that you've contributed to those groups. Um, Sophie, to to your point, um, in in a sense, COVID um, has helped move forward something that was going to have to happen. Anyway, so if you just look at the numbers, put it putting COVID aside, you, over the next between now and twenty forty, um, in the UK we need to build four hundred care homes a year. Uh, now that that just ain't going to happen, right? So so as we move forward, the social care sector needs to um, adapt to the fact that we're going to have an increasing number amount of what's technically called informal care. Um, in in people's homes, that like that that is inevitably going to be the case, and it's going to be on a huge scale. So, so the f first thing is we need to wake up to that, and I think coronavirus has helped us uh, recognize that there's a lot more that we can be doing. The second piece I think is is particularly around online uh, support. So I was in uh, Shropshire today, where we're doing um, so working with some fantastic people uh, and partners there. That's a really rural part of. Uh, the country, uh, nipping down the road to a, a coffee morning or to, to nip into a, a center for some advice is, is going to be a really real challenge there. So there's a, it's really important that we explore how remote engagement can, uh, can, can not just be accessible, but actually really meaningful. So nobody wakes up and thinks, oh, what I really want to do is hop on a Zoom call with a load of people. Uh, but how can we make sure that that remote engagement is is really effective and powerful and, and also responding to, to people's needs? Uh, just two little thoughts, Sophie, if I may. One is that um, uh, actually there's, there's a big uh, phenomenon that we're seeing at the moment, which is what, what we call the on-call carer. You might not be actually physically caring for the whole day, but you you might be needed at any moment. So just nipping out to see a friend for a cup of coffee is, is not a very straightforward thing to do because you can't plan when you're going to be needed. So again, you can see how the, the online um, stuff is, is really important. Um, and the other piece is, is to make sure that it's uh, scalable as well. And, and we want to be, I mean, there are 13 and a half million people who uh, need support at the moment. We need to make sure that we've got a solution which, is, which can be rolled out to, to everybody who needs it. Yeah, great insights. Vanessa, do you feel that's kind of the, the, the way that you see it or is there any, anything else you want to add? Uh, yeah, pretty much what James was saying there. Yeah, it is, it is difficult to get support. And the online support that I've received from Mobilize has been amazing. It really has, even the Facebook group, you know, you can go on there and you can always see something that's gonna make you smile. Oh, good. It's good to see everybody using the, all the medias. Um, <laughs> we've got Facebook. I mean, we're streaming on Facebook and all these places. You've even got a, you, your own YouTube channel. That's where you've got some of your cuppers as well. So people can check that out. Um, but that I think it is important to use all of those accessible um, uh, kind of technologies that we've got available to everyone so that you can just click a button and then you're there. So um, and it doesn't cost anything. Um, you know, just to to kind of engage with that, um, but yeah, I, I, no, on, James. Well, I, so for just one one more thought on that, which which might be interesting for um, colleagues in the uh, commissioned care sector, um, and and particularly the people who are marketing for it, because we, we've we've found there's a really interesting spike in activity between two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning. 
And I would I would love any of your subscribers and followers to to share what they think this might be about. So I have a theory, which is that um, you get up in the night to take someone to the loo, you get them back, you get them settled, and then it's really hard to go to sleep again. So so that's when we see people coming online to to deal with some of the administrative things, get your carer's allowance sorted, write an email to the council, whatever it might be. Um, and I think that's that's a really important part of. Um, those of us in the social care sector responding to the needs of people um, that might not be expected. So I would I would never have predicted that that was a thing, but using the um, the co-production principles that that uh, are so, so important to you guys, Sophie, um, uh, we can actually learn from working alongside people that actually two o'clock to three o'clock in the morning is bizarrely a great time to, to be talking to people, um, and and you have. Um, an opportunity to to engage, um, and I think that's another example of of how we can do stuff online that we could never do uh, in person. Yeah, that's a, how do you know that? <laughs> oh well, <laughs> we we just look at the the traffic on our website basically, oh. and, and we have um, we have people using little little tools on our website um, to help them figure out what what they need to do next. They plug in a bit of information, so so I, I actually get an email every time anybody does it. And I get a, I wake up in the morning, and uh, there's a great long list of emails from people between two o'clock and three o'clock in the morning who've been active. Wow, that's incredible. I mean, I know I can I can't relate to that as a carer, but I can relate to that as a mum. Often, <laughs> two or three in the morning with a child that's screaming, and then not being able to get to bed. But presumably, the kind of things that people are trying to access, they may be worried. They may be worried about something and they just don't know where to go. So at that point in the morning, they're thinking, right, I'm just going to go and um, I'm going to look at this because two and three in the morning, I can't get to bed. I'm also worried about this. I need to access some support. So that is really interesting. And like you say, having online support at, at that time. Um, I really want to find out as well from you, Vanessa, a typical day yeah. that you, and there's probably never, ever a typical day. But can you relate to that, those stats that James just oh. gave us? And, and what's, what is a day for you like? I can definitely relate to James saying that, definitely. My day starts around 4 a.m. every day. Um, I do get the first load of washing ready in the washing machine. Um, then I prepare our meals for the day. Then I get my husband up around six, between six and seven, and he goes in the bath every morning. Um, and then we come down, we have breakfast, but it's already been prepared because I've done it in those couple of hours that I've had before anybody else gets up. Um, and then, but in between those two hours, whilst I'm prepping food and things like that, I try to do like what James was saying, um, things that I need to do online. Um, I'm not very tech savvy, uh, but there's some little things that I can do on my own. Um, so the day probably, and then usually we've got to take my daughter to college. Um, she has to be at college before nine o'clock when she goes back next week. Um, and then driving around being a taxi and then we have lunch, then I go pick Olivia up from school, from college, uh, then it's tea time, we're doing homework, we've been homeschooling. Um, so it's a busy, a busy full on day, you know, and then in between that, I've got to squeeze in going to the shop, going shopping or um, taking the dog for a walk even, you know, every, my day is planned. Wow. When, right do you, when do you go to sleep then, if you're waking up that early? I don't sleep very much, and I oh. tend to sleep on the sofa. Oh, bless you. If, if my husband's had a bad day, and we can always tell if he's had a bad day because he's been falling asleep in the chair more than normal, um, I know that he's going to have horrendous spasms at night, so I don't go to bed. I, I go to sleep on the sofa. And do you get any support for you? Like physical, you get. You said you get some uh, agency that comes in to support your husband. Do you get any support for you? No, no, I don't have any support at all. The only support I have is the mobilised copper on an afternoon. 
That's incredible. And my emails, my emails from Mobilize. Oh, that's incredible. I can't believe all that you're doing. It just blows my mind. Um, although some person in the chat agrees with you that waking up that that early in the morning is a great time to do work. <laughs> <laughs> so um someone agrees with you but four o'clock is, is very intense and then obviously you're you're on the go um just incredible and and james do you find that's a trend with a lot of carers that you speak to at mobilize that they are really working flat out oh uh, absolutely and and um uh, you know we're, we're sometimes really um uh, cut up because we want to have a positive optimistic um uh, sometimes a funny uh, tone through mobilize we think that that's a really important way of coping but but at the same time we need to be able to communicate that things are really really tough for a lot of people at the moment and um there's a huge number of people who would otherwise be uh, receiving um respite care uh, people coming in to support them um and at the moment that 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 isn't happening and um, while uh, much of society is getting back to normal, uh, however slowly and however imperfectly and messily, um, carers are watching that and almost wanting to wave and say, hello, <laughs> mm. we're still here. Um, and we, you know, this, this is really a very, very long way from either normal or anything that is sustainable. Um, that there's a real challenge about uh, how long we can go on for without um, uh, additional support. And, and I know that the, the local authorities that we're working with are taking that really seriously to, to try and move as quickly as possible to, to bring those services back uh, uh, to what they need to be, um, probably not like they used to be, uh, but, but moving as quickly as possible. And, and I think um, the more we can share... Um, share with local authorities and central government and whoever it, else it might be, particularly commissioners, uh, what the specific challenges of carers are, uh, the more effective that that work will be. And that's why um, one of the things that we're really prioritizing uh, over the next couple of weeks is the development of a, um, uh, a mobilized moments tool. Um, and Vanessa mentioned her day there. Um, and we would love to be able to help um, create a little bit of time yeah. for carers that is that is for self-care, uh, mm -hmm. even if that's just five minutes. Um, and that will um, include uh, the opportunity to share a bit of your experience that day that we can then pool together, gather some evidence around um, and some data that can then inform planning from local authorities, central government and commissioners uh, to, to, to get that support back as quickly as possible. That sounds really good. Um, and Vanessa, I know you've got a little... Uh, pooch there in the background yeah, don't, worry don't worry about it it's fine um but yeah i mean that's really so that's the future for for what you're doing james and i think that's really important actually to kind of pull together that that evidence that you can share with local authorities to really i mean it's crazy that people need that to know that they need to give support but it's still <coughs> people normally get whether it's financial support or resources out on the basis of evidence or mm. data, like you said, of any form, whether it's um, sort of stories like that or whether it's stats. So I think that's re really important. Is there Are there any other things for the future of Mobilize that you're thinking you're going to take it forward to? Uh, uh, lots of uh, plans. And I should say on that particular um, piece of work that we are really, really excited that the the care sector has come together around this idea really effectively. So we're working with, I can't, I've lost count of how many um, carer support organizations, carer centers around the country um, uh, have been part of the workshop to build that tool uh, with us and will be working with us in, in the next few months. Uh, but also um, uh, the, the partnership that we have with Carers Trust, I think is, is really powerful. And I think, you know, so, so often the social care sector is knocked for, um, for being fragmented and, uh, uh, and, and and problematic in in some sort of way, but but actually this is a really great example of how people are working together, and actually we're all on the same side. We all have the same outcome that we're looking for, which is to make sure that we equip people uh, to look after the people we love, make sure that they are healthy, uh, happy, and safe, um, and that's crucial uh, for us. So so there's 
there's plenty to be doing and we're hoping to do it as collaboratively as possible working with as many local authorities and their um, local care support as well as uh, speaking to the national um, conversation as well good it sounds like you're you're doing some great things there i mean is there anything that you would say either to the government or to local authorities that they need to get onto now in preparation for a second wave? Because I'm really concerned about burnout amongst people. But is there anything that you, from your experience and, and from Mobilizer's point of view, that you think is just like a must right now? Um, there's a huge list of things that um, uh, that I think have been actually quite well documented by uh, Carers UK and Carers Trust. What, what I would add to that from the mobilized perspective is the number of people who are not being spoken to at the moment. Um, and yeah, Vanessa used a really interesting example that she happened to be watching Sky News um, when some some chap came on and was talking about mobilize. Um, uh, and, and, and actually we need to be much more deliberate about reaching out to carers, letting them know that there is support out there. It, it may be flawed and complicated and slow, or all of the things at the moment, but it is there and there are people who are really keen to help them. I think that is the most important first step because once you're, once you're having a conversation with somebody, um, you know, that, that from there you, you can get a lot. But, but I also want to, uh, to, to uh, invite Vanessa, who will, I'm sure, have an opinion of her own uh, on what the priority needs to be from her perspective. Yeah, Vanessa, I don't know if you heard that, but uh, yeah, from your perspective, is there anything um, that you think that needs to be done now, really, to help uh, to help carers? Just to be recognised. No, yeah. being recognised for what you're doing. Yeah, absolutely, I agree. That's okay. We have we have people zoom bombing all the time. My children, <laughs> might, my children might just float in behind me, but I'm hoping that they're in bed right now because they've got the first day of school tomorrow. Um, but no, I, that's amazing, and I really appreciate it. And I know that you're super busy, Vanessa. So um, I think we will let you go. And I think your insights have been fantastic. And we definitely will be take sharing this video and taking um, snapshots of it, just to, I think to highlight the plight of. Well, not so much the plight, because it always kind of pictured in a negative way, but it is amazing what carers are doing. And I don't think people really appreciate that. Um, and actually the need for the support that you've just been calling for. So, um, yeah, people stay tuned for, for some of that on our social media. But thank you so much for joining us, Vanessa. It's been lovely to hear from you. You're very welcome. Thank you for asking me to join. That was lovely to hear from Vanessa. Really, really fantastic. What a hero. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it's really humbling, actually. Uh, so, yeah, that was really, really helpful to to have that conversation um, from both of you and and to to see really how that support isn't isn't done enough, I think, and supported enough. And like I said, I do think there's a place for local authorities to set aside some resources to really concentrate on bringing together information and support groups for carers in their areas. I think that is just like a, a must. Uh, organizations like yourselves and others and if there aren't any then truly really trying to mobilize uh, that support and and really uh, advertise where it is so carers can get that and just not be on their own even if it is those discussions I mean Vanessa really did highlight how much it might just seem like to us a, a chat on a zoom but to her it made such a difference because she can talk to somebody she can't go out for a cuppa but yeah. this makes a difference because it feels like she's with people who are exactly the same situation as she is and have a laugh and, and also um, get some support. So really, really important insights. Um, so I think we're going to pretty much leave it there now, James. Um, and obviously we've, we've shared your website and how people can get in touch. Um, so people, and we will share some more on the, on the bottom of the screen shortly. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, James, for coming on. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, well, really th talking to you. Th thanks for the time, and um, uh, it, it's been it's been great to to share not only our work but um, the experiences of carers that we're working with. I think that's uh, is we've really valued the opportunity to. So thank you. Thank you.
Great. So that was um, James from Mobilize, and we have shared a lot of uh, how information how to get in touch with them on their website. Do engage. Uh, but also, I think the debate about carers is probably something we need to have a bit more. So do you have any ideas of who we could talk to more about this? I think it would be a good idea to really discuss some of the issues a bit more and some of the organizations that are doing some great work, even if it's just to share some of that good practice. So that's it from us this evening. Thank you all very much for tuning in. Um, really enjoyed this uh, live stream. Like I said, carers and care organizations are pretty new to us, uh, to me, in terms of we don't really uh, work with them so much, but we want to hear more from them. So it was really good to, to do that. Um, and we will be back again. Uh, I do encourage you to follow us and to subscribe. It doesn't cost anything. It just means that you'll know when we're going live, especially if you're on YouTube, press the bell, really important, just gives you notifications of, of when we're going live. I say that especially if you are uh, somebody who, anybody actually in social care, you'll know the Care Quality Commission, the regulator of social care. We've had um, Kate Taroni on before. She's the chief inspector of CQC. We are due to have her on again next month report they do around uh, the care sector and there's always some really interesting statistics um, and so I'm looking forward to that coming out and she's going to talk to that but obviously if you're on our live stream you'll be able to ask her questions around it and anything else so it's a really interactive conversation as usual um, and we'd really love your questions for Kate again so real good reason to subscribe and like um, and of course we'll be back again with hopefully a panel on that one um, to talk about, to respond. So we're going to invite some other people to talk about that as well. So uh, very much looking forward to speaking to everyone again. Um, take care and we look forward to doing another live stream soon. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye.